Now, as a tutorial, if this is the first time you've set up the TV, um, you are going to see this Google Assistant screen. So I'll take a second to explain how Google Assistant sets itself up. The first time you push the Google Assistant button, um, you'll see this screen which says, hey, get voice control, continue. And then here you have to decide whether you want the Google Assistant to be able to search all of your apps. Uh, this is up to you how much information you wish to share with uh, the Google Assistant. But obviously if you tell Google Assistant to find a movie with, I don't know, Susan Sarandon, and you don't give it access to your other applications, it's not going to be searching Netflix or Prime Video or any of these other applications. So um, for the best and most efficient use of the feature, you probably wanna go ahead and allow that access. You can at this point read um, you know, about your privacy and how it encrypts your voice and protects you, etc., by clicking here. And then there's also a link there that you can go to to read even more detail. At that point, you would say continue. And then here, do you want emails about what they've added or how they've changed the, the feature? You can select yes or no. And then the last step is it's going to sign in and show you a video. So you actually have to tell it which account do you want to use Google Assistant on. So my account's blurred out here, but I'm picking my email account, which is on that top row there. And then it's going to play this video. This video explains the feature, and I'm going to let it run for just a second. Okay, Google, what can you do? You can ask me things like, play some music. Play Master of None. Young Town, popular. All right, so rather than show you the whole video, just know that when that video pops up, you can watch it and learn more about the feature. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, at this stage, you can just push your Google Assistant button and ask your television to do things for you. And watch the video that I linked previously if you'd like more examples of what you can have the Google Assistant do for you. In order to install the Google Duo video conferencing application, you have two options. The first option is the one that it shows you during the initial setup, which you see on screen here. If you did not unclick the application during your initial setup, then you already have the application on your television and you can simply launch it. If you did uncheck it, or if you deleted it subsequently, but you're trying to reinstall it now, then what you will want to do is you'll want to go through and follow the second part of this video where I show you how to reinstall it. Okay, assuming that during the initial setup you did not install the Google Duo app, this is what you would need to do at this point to install it. Um, this is the newer home screen. I'll put a link in the description of the comparison to the new versus the old home screen. Um, if you're doing this initially right out of the box, you may see the older home screen where you move left on this top row to get to the application screen. But on the new home screen, it is actually up here under the tab labeled apps. And once you come up here, you basically have all of your installed applications down here. And you can see that I do not have Google Duo installed, nor do I have Stadia installed for that matter. But for this part of the video, we're gonna to go to the Google Play Store and we're going to go ahead and install Google Duo. And again, once we're here in the Play Store, the easiest way to find an app is to go up under search and then push the button for Google Assistant, Google Duo app. Here's Google Duo on the Google Play Store. And you see it pops right up. Um, I have the button there for install because I have not installed it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install the application now. And again, this is only if you didn't install it during initial setup when the initial setup screen offered to install it for you. If you did install it at initial setup, then you'll just skip to the next step where you actually configure the application to work. 
Right. So now we've installed the application and we would click on open here. And obviously for a video conferencing program to work, you actually need to give it access to your contacts. These are going to be your Google um, address book contacts. So you can allow that here so that you can make calls directly from your television to any of your contacts that have uh, the, the ability to video conference with you through Google Duo. I'm gonna skip that at this point. You'll notice at the bottom, you can change this later under settings and apps. So if you ever wanna come back in here and revoke access or give access to the program, uh, that's where you would go. I'll show that to you here in a second. Um, do we want it to be able to record audio? Yes, because I need the video conference to work. And it says here at the bottom that I can now be reached via email at my Gmail email. Right. So there we have it. My account is all set up. And do I want it to be able to use the camera is the last setting. So we will allow that. And voila, it turns on and you can see uh, my messy living room here. So I actually have uh, an older Microsoft HD camera. Your mileage may vary. There is a list of the supported video cameras uh, that will be kept up to date on the support site for this television. But um, basically this one is connected via USB into the connection on the back of the television and it works. So that is how you set up Google Duo. And then obviously here you can search contacts or dial. So bing, bang, boom, that's how you would make a call and the video conferencing would then work. Okay, in this quick section of the video, we're going to go ahead and set up the Stadia gaming platform. And just as with any application, if you're looking to add an application to an Android television, you need to go to the Google Play Store. Depending upon how your television is set up, there are a number of different ways to get there. You may have the Play Store as a favorite, um, as I do here. You may have the older um, on-screen menu, in which case you would move to the left here on the first row and click on the big red circle that's labeled apps, which would then pull up the screen that I'm going to show you. But if you have the latest graphical user interface home screen, you go to the top and move across to where it says applications. And then just go down one click and you can open the Google Play Store. And then at this point, you can use the Google Assistant to search for the Stadia app. So to do that, on the remote, you're going to press and hold the button that has the multicolored circles on it. Stadia application. Here's Stadia on the Google Play Store. And you can see that it finds it right away. You click install. And at this point, the Stadia application is being installed on your television. A couple things to keep in mind here, just like when you install the Netflix application on your television, that doesn't mean that you have a Netflix account. And the first time you try to sign into Netflix, it's going to say you need an account and you'll have to set up a Netflix account. Or if you have a Netflix account, it's going to say, please sign into your Netflix account. The Stadia platform is tied to your Gmail account and the Stadia platform on this TV will be tied to the Gmail account that you use to sign into the TV. So if you're setting up Stadia, set it up on that Gmail account. Um, in my case, I do have an account already set up. So when I click on open to open the Stadia application, what I'm going to see initially is choose an account. If you don't have um, Stadia on this Gmail account, but you have another different one, then you would need to add another account to the Stadia app to be able to access your Stadia games. But I have it here, so I'm just gonna click on that. 
and now the application will load. Now you will get an indication that the application is not optimized for this TV. You may have gaming performance issues while playing. Um, I think that's really just the Stadia platform trying to cover its bases with all of the various Android televisions that are out there. This television has been tested to work with Stadia. Um, so at this point you can just click continue. And the first thing that you're going to need to do to be able to play games on the television is to connect a controller. That kind of makes sense. So you will select connect controller and you'll see that you have a menu that pops up on the right side. There is a Stadia controller, there is a PlayStation controller, there is an Xbox controller, and there is an other. If you're using PlayStation or Xbox, you would pick those. If you're using a Stadia controller, you would pick that. We are in fact using a Stadia controller. That controller looks like this. Um, so we're going to select the Stadia controller selection here and pair the controller to this television. You would need to do the same thing for any of the other controllers as well. Now, when you select that, this part is a little bit, I would say non-intuitive, but it is going to give you a button sequence to press. And that sequence is, I'm gonna hold the remote up here. You have a thumb pad here. So where it's basically telling you right, that's gonna be the right on the thumb pad, then button A, then button right, then button Y. So you do those buttons in sequence after you turn on the remote, uh, or rather the controller. So we're gonna go right, A, right, Y. Now the remote is gonna flash and it's gonna double vibrate to let you know, cool, everything's good. But the non-intuitive part is that the instructions on the screen have not gone away. They're still there. So at this point, just hit the back button on your remote to come out to where it says continue. And you can press the A button on your Stadia controller and you now see that it's working. So I have hit the A button and I'm into a game. Now well, the game I have installed here is, I have two different games. I have Hitman and I have Terraria or Terraria, which I'm in. Depending upon which game you wanna play, Go down here and select the game. You can browse or buy more games with the Stadia mobile app that you would need to do either on your phone or your tablet or online. But every time you buy an application and install it, it shows up here for you to play. So we simply select play. And at this stage, we are ready to begin our Terraria experience on the television. So the game will load. And we'll let it do that just for a second. And we should see shortly that we are in the game and we can begin playing. Obviously, I don't control the loading screens. All right, so here we are. And not exciting gameplay, but there you go. We're playing Terraria on our television. I don't actually, uh, I'm not an expert in this game. <laughs> so, uh, sorry for that. But whatever game it is that you wish to play, you have the uh, ability to install it and you have the ability to play it on your TV. So that's how you get Stadia up and running. Hopefully this has helped and enjoy playing games in your Stadia gaming platform on your Philips Android television.